Hello! Today we're going to learn to write an equation in slope-intercept form, a linear equation, given two points. So they're not going to give us the slope and they're not going to give us the y-intercept. All they're going to do is give us two points. But we can do that because we've learned to find slope, rise over run, given two points, and we've also learned to find the b value by using b equaling a y value minus m times x which is just rearranging this slope-intercept form a little bit, minus an mx over, allows us to find b. So let's do an example. Now, we can always hope and pray that one of the two points they give us has the y-intercept in it. So remember, if they give us two points, the first value is an x, the second value is a y, first value is an x, second value is a y. Luckily, they've given us the y-intercept, because if x is zero, then the y that's paired with it is our y-intercept. But we still need to find the slope. So the way we're going to find the slope is I'm going to actually label this x1, y1, and this one x2, y2. So I can actually find my slope by taking that second y value, minusing off the first y value. Now i got to be careful because I'm minusing a negative, divided by the first, or sorry, the second x value, which is 0, minus off the first x value, which is 8. Again, 5 plus 3, because minus and minus becomes plus. 5 plus 3 is 8. 0 minus 8 is negative 8. That reduces to a negative 1. So my slope is negative 1. Now I need to find my b value, but it gives us the b value, because the b value is when x is 0. So I can write my equation. y equals negative 1x which you really don't need to write the x, and then plus 5. And we've written our equation. So we found our slope, and then we found the b value if need be. So let's do one where we have to do that. So let's do another one where let's do a point where I don't give us the y-intercept. Let's do the point 4, 5, and the point 5, 7. Okay, first thing again, y equals mx plus b. We're going to find our m value by doing the x minus the x. Nope, sorry, y. y is on top. y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. So again, if you need to, label this x1, y1, this x2, y2. So I'm going to take my second y value, which is 7, minus off my first y value, which is 5 divided by my second x value, which is 5, minus my first x value, which is 1, I get a slope of all things of 2 over 5 minus 4, 2 over 1. I did a little bit of that in my head. I 5 minus 4, I was thinking 1, so I wrote 1, but it's 5 minus 4, which is 2 over 1, or a slope of 2. Now i got to find the y-intercept. So remember, I'm going to find the y-intercept that b value by taking a y value and minusing off the slope times the x value. So I need to use one of these two points. Doesn't matter which one I use, but I gotta stick with the same one. So I'm gonna pick this back one here. I'm gonna take a y value of seven, I'm gonna minus off my slope of two times my x value of five. Now remember I use the x value of five because I use this y value of seven. So I get 7 minus 2 times 5 is 10. Make sure you watch order of operations. Multiplication first. 7 minus 10 is negative 3. So my b value is negative 3. Now I can write the equation. y equals my slope we found out was 2 times x minus my b value. Now I want to show you that it wouldn't have mattered if I'd used the other point to find my b value. If I'd used this point, I would have said my b value is, take my y value of 5, minus off my slope of 2 times the corresponding x value. Now since I used y this or 5 this time for my y value, I'm going to use 4. And then 5 minus 2 times 4 is 8. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. I get that exact same negative 3b value. So again, y equals 2x minus 3. Now, these don't have to be easy. And you need to learn to not panic when you see fractions. Let's do one more. Let's do negative 3, 8, and negative 5, oh, I don't know, um, 11. Okay, so again, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my slope, m. 
by doing y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, if you need to, this is x1, y1. This is x2, y2. So I'm going to do 11. That's my second y minus off my first y, which is 8, divided by my second x value, which is negative 5, minus off my first x value, which is negative 3. So I'm minus and a minus and minus a minus. So be careful. 11 minus 8 is 3. Negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So I get a slope of negative 3 halves. Now I need to find my b value. Now remember, b is found by doing a y value minus and off mx. So again, let us I don't care which one we use here. I'm going to use this one. I'm going to take a y value of 11 minus off my slope of negative 3 halves times my x value of negative 5. So now be very careful of your signs here. I have a negative, a minus, and a minus. So I get 11 minus because 1, 2, 3 negatives is going to end up being a minus. So that's a positive and then another negative. And then negative 5 or 5 times 3 is going to be 15 halves. Well, I can't minus 15 halves from 11 unless I get a common denominator. That's all right. Fractions, we can do those. We get 22 halves minus 15 halves. 22 minus 15 is 7 halves. So my y-intercept is 7 halves. My slope was negative 3 halves. So I can write my equation. y equals, what's my slope? Negative 3 halves, always times x. And then my y val or my b value was plus 7 halves, or my y-intercept. And I've written my equation. So even if the equations throw you a slope of a fraction, a fractional slope, and then when you plug it in to find your b, you get a fractional y-intercept, perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with fractional y-intercepts and fractional slopes. If you have any questions, please do bring them to class.